Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Society of Santa Barbara. And you can say good morning back wherever you are, whether you're joining us online or here in this room. Good morning to you all. It is, it is good to be together, good to be with one another this morning. I'm the Reverend Julia Hamilton, and I am delighted to welcome you here. We are a loving community of seekers, striving to live with integrity, nurture wonder, and inspire the actions that transform us and transform the world. And this month, we are entering into the theme of joy in all sorts of different ways, in our small groups, in our worship services. And this morning is, we are not just going to be talking about joy and thinking about joy, but we are going to be embodying joy this morning because we will be dedicating a child into the life of this congregation. We will be welcoming our new music director and honoring the legacy of music that infuses the spirit of this community. It is a joyful morning to be together with so much much to celebrate, even amidst a world that is challenging and heartbreaking. Thank you for taking the time to be here, to nurture your spirit, and grow our community together. If you're visiting with us, we would love to get to know you better, whether you're here or online. We would love for you to stop by our welcome table out in the courtyard or fill out the guest book online so that we can keep in touch about all the things that are going on here in this community. And in this holiday season, we do have some things going on. And I hope you'll join us, perhaps on Christmas Eve, here welcoming you back into the sanctuary for one of our three services on Christmas Eve. We will still have an attendance cap, so there'll be an RSVP link going out. So please RSVP so we know how many to expect. But it'll be wonderful to both be together online and in person this Christmas Eve at 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock, or 9 o'clock for our jazz service to close out the evening. We are also going to be starting a new tradition this year, our solstice gathering at Goleta Beach between 4 and 5 p.m. We're going to be gathering to watch the sunset on the longest night, on the shortest day. So if you have a hankering for taking advantage of one of those beautiful Santa Barbara sunsets together, bring a chair and a warm blanket and maybe a thermos of hot cocoa and join Charlotte Brigante, our lifespan director of religious education and other members of this community to celebrate the solstice sunset together. That evening on the 21st, there is also going to be a gathering at 6 p.m. at the courthouse, the longest night vigil, which will be in remembrance of all of our neighbors who have been living on the streets who died over the past year. And it's an opportunity for us to recommit ourselves to becoming a community where no one, no one is left out in the cold. And with that, I want to say thank you to all of the Warming Center volunteers. We had our first activation on Thursday and Friday of this week, and I know it takes so many people to make the Warming Centers happen each year in this congregation and across our county. If you've signed up to be a Warming Center hospitality team volunteer this year, could you raise your hand or type in in the chat if you're joining us online? Look how many members of this community are making this happen. Let us, let us know as so that we can thank you. I also want to thank everyone who made our craft fair such a joyful occasion last Sunday. We had wonderful volunteers to reintroduce that beloved tradition uh, for the holidays. Thank you to Sharla and to everyone who helped make the craft fair happen last week. I invite you now to take a breath, to set aside any holiday to-do lists you might be carrying with you whatever busyness is weighing on you. Set aside the need to be anywhere but here, the need to be with anyone but yourself and this community, and let us ring our bell and let the sound connect us. I love how all the sounds of life in this sanctuary connect us. It's a wonderful thing. Charlotte, would you like to come forward with our words for chalice lighting this morning? <laughs> I, re I realize I just surprised Charlotte. <laughs> are they right here? They are not right here, which means I'm going to open them up and find them for you. Thanks. In just a moment. <laughs>
Good morning. Nice to start the day with a surprise. <laughs> May the love which overcomes all differences, which heals all wounds, which puts to flight all fears, which reconciles all who are separated, be in us and among us now and always. Every week we lift up places we see more love and justice come into being among us in our community and in the world, and we call it our love and justice jar, our contributions to those places that, and people that keep us going and keep us inspired. So I invite you now to call to mind some act of love, some movement towards justice that you have witnessed this week. And if you're joining us online, you can type it into the chat. And if you're here, I invite you to share it afterwards at coffee hour. Well, we don't have coffee hour after in the garden. We'll have coffee soon. <laughs> but I invite you to share it. Tell each other about these things you witness so that we can inspire each other in our work. Uh, out in the world. And what I want to lift up for our collective contribution to the Love and Justice Jar today is the fact that this year there are 50 times more monarch butterflies wintering in California than last year. This is, I'm sure, due in part to the love and care that so many people have put into making sure those butterfly sanctuaries are protected, that the butterflies have a safe home to stop at on their migrations, and the love and care that we express for the earth and the ways that we try to make healing spaces amidst the crisis. So give thanks for those butterflies. If you see them, take a minute if you can to go out to Elwood uh, and enjoy this, hopefully what will be a continued return of this annual migration of this beloved part of our community. And now let us make some music together. Frederick Lucian Hosmer, who is, in fact, on our window. Um, we'll also be doing choir for him later today. So, please listen as the choir and I sing from age to age. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good morning again. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I'm Charla Bergante, and I'm the Director of Religious Education here at USSB. As a faith community, we believe in lifespan, spiritual growth, and faith exploration. And this morning, I'm here to share the honor of formally welcoming one of our youngest into the heart of this congregation, as we have welcomed so many generations of children before. Yes, <laughs> he's ready. We come to welcome Emil Russell Meng and to pledge our support to him and his parents, Emily Maynard and Kyle Meng, and to dedicate this child into a community of integrity, wonder, and joy. Emil is joined today by his parents as well his, as his sister Persephone and his paternal grandparents, Jing Chen and Shen Meng. And we also want to welcome virtually his maternal grandparents, Hugh Maynard and Faith Woodman, who are joining us by Zoom this morning. And the family has prepared some promises for Emil that they would like to share this morning. Emil, I promise to let you freely explore your curiosities, yeah. to seek and understand what fascinates you, and to support your intellectual pursuits therein. Emil, I promise to show you to enjoy the gifts of the mind, science, art, music, literature, the intellect. You already show such curiosity about the world. I promise to help you to retain your sense of wonder against the threat of boredom and cynicism. I promise to give you the chance to discover the delights of materiality through dance, sport, touch, rhythm, and stillness. I promise to show you what it means to be generous and patient with others and yourself, and to both appreciate what you have and to show compassion when others have less. Emil, I promise to love you always and to show you that love every day so that you can learn to love yourself and others. I promise to respect the ways that you love others. Emil, I promise to show you the many beauties of our natural world to help you develop a sense of awe towards its mysteries and magic. Emil, I promise to respect your individuality, the spark that is yours and yours alone. I promise to respect your dark places, your comings and goings, your divine rage, and your sacred passions. Emil, I promise that I will always be kind to you. I promise that I will take care of you. I promise that I will always love you so much. Because each child is a unique and complex world unto themselves, we bring the blessings of the elements of our world to them. And Charlotte, will you light this from our main chalice? Fire, earth, water from our ingathering and air. And today, in recognition of Emil's Chinese heritage, we add the element of wood, one of the five Taoist elements. You want to come on over here, Emil? Emil, we bless your heart with water, the source of life and a bond that unites us all. May you grow kind, overflowing with love for our common humanity. Emil, we bless your mind with fire, the heat from our chalice, the symbol of our free faith. May you grow strong with the courage of your convictions and always trusting in your own inner light. Emil, we bless your body with earth. May you grow wise, knowing yourself as a piece of earth conscious of itself, 
with the commitment to take care of yourself and this planet that we share. You want to come hand that right? And Neil, we bless your hands. Oh. We bless your hands with wood. May they work to build a vibrant and peaceful world, honoring the ancestors that have come before us and all the children who will come after us. And finally, we bless your spirit with air. <laughs> the creative breath of life. May you grow joyful, leading a life filled with wonder and being an inspiration to others who walk this life with you. In the Unitarian Universalist tradition, the blessing of a child, I'm sorry, the blessings that a child receives do not come from any one individual and not even from a religious institution. They come from the gathered community that embodies the spirit of life that flows through us all. The words are And the words, I'm going to ask you to join me in reading the words printed not printed, on the screen <laughs> above the, 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 the... And if you're joining us from home, you can read the words there to join with us in this blessing. Each new life comes to us as a gift and reminds us of the divine spark that resides within each of us. With each new life comes new responsibilities, challenges, and joys. And so will this congregation commit to nurturing this child and his family as they discover the gifts that he brings into this world. Would you like to read along? To support of you and your family, and we, we renew our, our commitment, commitment to being, to being a welcoming, welcoming multi-generational multi community. We, we promise, promise to nurture the gifts of your unique life, life that you share with us and the world, and to be there for you in times of sadness as well as joy. May we build a world in which you can flourish, surrounded by beauty, embraced by love, inspired by truth, and cradled in the arms of peace. Let's make a joyful noise. <laughs> It's so wonderful to welcome new life into this community. It's been so long since we've been able to do a child dedication together. It's also wonderful to be able to dedicate a sibling. In uh, 2015, we hear, we're here with much of those same words for Persephone as she began her life here in this congregation. And now they are off to their fun activities in our religious education program where our youth are meeting outdoors in the courtyard down below. I invite us now into a time of quiet, a time of reflection and meditation and prayer. We gather this morning knowing that joy and sorrow are always hand in hand in this world. And this morning, even amidst our celebrations, we hold space most especially for those who are dealing with the aftermath of the devastating tornadoes that hit six states on Friday night. We make space to hold in our hearts all of those who are still searching for loved ones, those whose lives have been lost, the first responders who are springing into action to help and save as many as possible, and those who are looking at a long road toward rebuilding. In this community, we know what it is to live through disasters that strike us, to come together in the aftermath of tragedy. And so in the coming moment of quiet, let us send to those folks in Arkansas, Illinois, Kentucky, Mississippi, Missouri, and Tennessee, all of our wishes for strength and courage and our hope for healing. Let us enter into a time of quiet together.
we gather this morning to welcome a new music director into the life of the congregation. Matthew, you want to come on up? This has been the work of so many hearts and hands, so many of you who have volunteered to get to this place. And although Matthew has been with us for several Sundays so far, this is the Sunday when we are going to formally launch and welcome him into the, our midst. And you're gonna, you've had a little practice reading, a responsive reading, and we're going to introduce that to you again. But first, I have to extend so much, come over here, I have to extend so much gratitude for all the people who made this happen. We started with putting together a music vision team, a group of people who would help the congregation uncover the vision that you hold for the future of our music program. And this was Deb Karoff, Kathy Lear, Ken Ralph, Gail Fairburn, Linda Beers, Gun Dukes, Ed Buchan, Melinda Stavey, and Patricia Riley, truly an all-star team. And then, after working with the congregation to develop the vision, which we will share with you in just a moment, that group was whittled down into a mighty group of five, our search team. And Deb, Kathy, Gail, and Linda added John Altman into the mix, and they did so much work behind the scenes to ensure that we had an integrity with proce a process with integrity, and we had several very well-qualified, wonderful applicants, and we were delighted to meet Matthew, who comes to us after serving a UU congregation for six years in North Carolina, Oh, sorry, not North Carolina, <laughs> Virginia, sorry, <laughs> in Virginia, uh, and moved out here to Santa Barbara to sing with us. I especially want to thank Deb Snow, our volunteer interim choir director who stepped into the gap. <laughs> helped get our choir singing again, rehearsing outdoors in preparation to be able to welcome Matthew. So now I would like to invite Deb, Kathy, Gail, John, Linda, Goon, Melinda, and Patricia forward. And they are going to share with you the vision statements to remind you of this incredibly inspiring statement that was created on behalf of the congregation to outline where we hope to go. Deb, I'm going to hand this to you. Unrehearsed, can you tell? <laughs> Ready? Okay. Good morning. In preparation for the search for our new music director, a music vision team was formed to solicit feedback from the congregation and to create a vision statement about the future of the music program. After hosting 10 feedback sessions and surveying the whole congregation, the following vision statement was written to help guide our search and inspire us in the years to come. The music ministry at the Unitarian Society of Santa Barbara amplifies and intensifies worship themes through creative and innovative use of repertoire, musicians, space, and other artistic elements. Deepens the spiritual and transcendent experiences for the congregation as individuals and as a whole inspires individual and community engagement by nourishing our best selves and supporting us in our work for justice. The music ministry at the Unitarian Society of Santa Barbara aspires to maintain the integrity and expression of music and worship in harmony with UU principles. Sustain a music ministry that embodies and enriches the worship experience. Be a welcoming and inclusive congregation by broadening activity and participation by ethnicity, generations, identities, and lived experiences. Promote interfaith collaboration and use music to generate the vision of the beloved community we hope to become. The music ministry will develop resources for expression and growth to increase outreach 
and communication to the larger Santa Barbara community. Cultivate and nurture greater diversity in music selection, choir members, and instrumentalists. Explore how music can expand awareness and help dismantle systems of oppression. And maximize the benefits of technology to enhance the music program. So that's the work we have cut out for us. That's the work Matthew is joining us to, to do. And now it is time to welcome you here. So I'm gonna invite you all as a congregation to rise in body and spirit wherever you are. And if you will read with me the words that are on your screen here and at home, and then Matthew is going to respond. We welcome you, Matthew, as the music director for the Unitarian Society of Santa Barbara. We empower you to help us bring the congregation's mission and vision to life through music. We can't see to grow and learn with you and do our part to support a vibrant music ministry. You carry our blessings and good wishes with you as we create new harmonies together. I will do my best to represent the spirit of this congregation through music, welcome everyone into participation, and use music as a tool to cultivate community, deepen spiritual connection, and inspire our work for justice. I will sing with you, grow, and learn with you, and do my part to lead a vibrant music ministry. I look forward to getting to know you as we work to create new harmonies together. We have kindled a new flame in this community. May the light and love of this community be with you in all your work and all your service. Let's make a joyful noise. Thank you. So we are going to sing the fire of commitment.
Our outreach offering partner for this month is the Immigrant Legal Defense Center. Every month, we partner with a project or program that lives our values in the world, and we've partnered for several years now with the Immigrant Legal Defense Center to help provide resources for people who are defending and making the case in the courts uh, through the immigration process. This is a very much needed service here in the county, and they provide excellent work with lots of volunteers, including some legal defense volunteers from our own congregation to con ensure that everyone has fair representation in their immigration proceedings. So please give as generously as you are able to support the work of our partner organization and the work of this congregation. And please read with me the affirmation of gratitude and giving as it is on your screen. Let us be grateful when we are able to give, for many do not have that privilege. And let us be grateful for those who share their gifts with us, for we are enriched by their giving. And let us be grateful even for our needs so that we may learn from the generosity of others. Thank you, singers. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Sharla. Thanks to all of you whose grace and goodwill as we navigate these slow steps back into community here and online, figuring out how to do familiar things in new ways. I just am so appreciative for all of the ways that we are moving together through this time. So it's probably not an exaggeration to say that Frederick Lucian Hosmer, born in 1840 in Framingham, Massachusetts, was one of the most well-regarded hymn writers at the turn of the 20th century. Hosmer, whose name is on that window, at the farthest back on that side there. He was a Unitarian minister, but his hymns have been used throughout Protestant churches all over the United States and England. And there are eight of his songs in the hymnal that we use today in the gray hymnal, and you've heard two of them, and we'll be singing one more at the close of the service. And you might notice that they might seem a little old-fashioned to our modern ear. I don't think anyone has used the word filch in a hymn <laughs> since Hosmer did. <laughs> Right, the song that you just heard, I walk the unfrequented road, where he says, I filch the fruit of no one's toil. He's reassuring us that he's not wandering country roads stealing the apple harvest, but rather harvesting the beauty of the season with his senses, his open eye and ear taking in the autumn, feeding his spirit, not filling his pockets with ill-gotten apples. 
In 1931, H.W. Stevenson wrote a short book about Unitarian hymn, writer, hymn writers, and he had this to say about Hosmer's recognition as one of the greatest hymn writers at the turn of the 20th century. He says, his title to so high a rank rested not on the merit of some one or two of his hymns, but on the fact that he had an unrivaled mastery of the technique of hymn writing. But that alone would not account for the wide popularity of his work. He had also the greater gifts of the Spirit. He brought to his task, or rather to his labor of love, a rare insight into the problems and aspirations of the human heart, a high idealism, a cultured and thoughtful mind, a profound spiritual experience, and lucidity of utterance. He had a lucidity of utterance. I encourage you when you have a moment to flip through the hymnal and you can find a listing of all eight of those hymns and you can read through some of these lyrics. And although today we might think some of his songs to be a bit wordy, in his time they were the height of poetic, spirit-driven church music. He may have been born in Massachusetts, but he did not stay there. After graduating from Harvard Divinity School, he took a series of positions in the Midwest, in Illinois, Ohio, and Missouri, before retiring to Berkeley, California, where he ended coming up out of retirement to preserve the congregation in Berkeley for four years, from 1900 to 1904. And he taught a lecture series on hymnody at Harvard Divinity School and at the Pacific School of Religion, and stayed in Berkeley until his death in 1929 at the age of 89. He was described as a gentle and poetic soul, known by all accounts and, as I quote, a beloved pastor and an acceptable preacher. <laughs> he wasn't famous for his preaching, but he was a thoughtful and sensitive man, a witty conversationalist and a loyal friend. He hung out with the radical crowd of his time, pushing the edges of theology to a more expansive and transcendentalist influence spiritual perspective. As Stevenson said, the ministers in Hosmer's circle were well versed in science and philosophy, knew their way about the tangled and thorny paths of biblical criticism, and were well read in world literature. But while some of his colleagues were making their name for themselves in the pulpit, it wasn't until he was in his 40s that he really began to find his voice through music. It was also during his time in the Midwest that he began coming out here to California for vacations. Our minister emeritus, Ken Collier, did some wonderful research about these windows, and he discovered that one of the reasons why Hosmer is here is because of his connection here to the time he spent in Santa Barbara on vacation. And I can imagine why someone who is serving in Cleveland might want to come out to Santa Barbara for the winters from time to time or get an escape from the hot and sticky summers. I can imagine the mid-career Hosmer coming out to Santa Barbara and watching the sunsets on the beach or walking the trails in the foothills and perhaps finding inspiration for his hymns in those contemplative moments. And here in Santa Barbara, he also found a group of Unitarians without a congregation to call home. A couple dozen folks from the East Coast who had relocated here to warmer weather and were wondering how to organize themselves. And so he helped them get started. And in 1876, the Unitarian Society of Santa Barbara was officially registered as a new congregation with Hosmer's help. It's probably because of this deep connection that the Alliance who commissioned these windows put his name up there. And I can also imagine some of those early conversations, right? The, those Unitarians gathered in living rooms and around dining tables talking about what kind of congregation they wanted to found. What kind of congregation did they want to be here in Santa Barbara? And with Hosmer at that table, I have to imagine that they talked about the role that music would play and the importance of singing together, songs that inspired and uplifted and encouraged them in their spiritual growth. From its very inception, the love of music has been one of the core values 
of this congregation. This is what Hosmer himself wrote about why good hymns were so important. He said, the hymn with its rhythm and music wings thought and feeling and blends the many voices in one as no red words can do, whether in the so-called responsive readings or in prayer. Moreover, the hymn, if it be a real hymn, carries within it the strains of aspiration and prayer. This can make the singing of it in the moment of highest uplift and thus vitalize the whole service. The choir may lead, he said, but congregational singing is the natural, valuable part of this liturgy. It atmospheres the entire service. I love that phrase. It atmospheres the entire service. And I can vouch for that sentiment. 145 years later, music still atmospheres our time together. It still plays a critical role in this congregation's identity. If you have been a part of this congregation for a while, I know you can remember times when the music of the choir and the hymns we sang together and the message of the morning just all served to create a whole body experience. And if you have only been with us over the past year as we've been navigating this virtual time together, I assure you those moments are on their way, coming again soon. Hang in there, friends. We're getting there. And it's one of the reasons why I am so thrilled to be welcoming Matthew today. And why I wanted to bring Hosmer, our ancestor, into the room with us today. Because when we honor the vision of our music program going forward, we know that that vision is created on the work of this congregation over generations. Vision does not spring from nowhere. It is just the next and newest expression of a long musical legacy of this congregation and our embrace of the transcendent power of singing together. It springs from the work of every choir director who has ever graced this community, who pulled people to their feet. It echoes in the pipes of the organ and every musician who pulled out all the stops on Christmas Eve. It lives in the piano and in the accompaniment that gives us the confidence to lend our voices into the mix. And it is constantly growing and changing and adding new melodies and learning from new expressions, even as we revisit some old favorites. I'm thrilled to be welcoming Matthew because in our conversations just over these past few weeks, I already know that he shares the same passion for the potential of congregational music to be transformative for us together on Sunday morning. It will take time to get there, but we will get there to quote one of our newer hymns, Wo Ya Ya. <laughs> we will get there. We may not know how we will get there, but we will get there. Hosmer was not just concerned with making music for music's sake, however. He was not just about creating atmospherics or generating good vibes only, as we might say in your language. He was making music with a theological purpose. The introduction to one of the hymnals that he co-edited with his closest friend and fellow hymn writer, William Channing Gannett, they cast this sort of prophetic vision about what the future of Unitarian hymns would look like. They stated in this introduction to this hymnal they put together, our hymns reflect the religious feelings underlying what is called the liberal faith, feelings of moral longing and consecration, he says. The book was full of songs that reflect what he calls a childlike trust in eternal goodness and a happy thankfulness for life. He goes on to say that the hymnal contains lots of songs that he calls herald songs, songs of the good to be. That's how he describes it, songs of the good to be. His way of saying songs that describe the world we aspire to, even if it is not the world that we live in yet the world that could be created if humanity worked together with peace and goodwill. It's a hymnal full of music about the betterment of humanity and the potential for faith and courage to overcome grief and strife. His most famous hymn, the one that we are going to sing in just a moment, is Forward Through the Ages. 
forward through the ages, he used a tune that was well known, Onward Christian Soldiers, some of you might remember from your youth. And he rewrote the lyrics to reflect a more progressive and less militant perspective. It became the unofficial anthem of the whole social gospel movement of the early 20, of the turn of the century, the social gospel movement, which was this spiritual awakening of progressive faith in the country. And the social gospel movement brought ethics into the pulpit. It asserted that people had a Christian duty to address problems of poverty and hunger and social inequality. It was connected to the labor and suffrage movements. And it focused on bringing the kingdom of heaven, not to some far off after death place, but right here among us. That Unitarian thread of focusing on the idea that how we live our lives here is what matters. And the impact that we have on each other here is what we should be singing about. Hosmer, like so many of his fellow radical colleagues, was deeply invested in social change. And he was not a fiery preacher, but he was moved by the suffering and injustice in the world, and he believed that we could do better. And so he sang about it. And it's one of the reasons that I have loved learning about him, because it reminds me that there are so many ways that each of us can enter into this work together, so many ways that we can find our voices. Not everyone has to be Theodore Parker preaching a fiery sermon. Some of us find our voices through music and art. Some of us find our voices in the work of our hands and hearts side by side with others. Some of us support, some of us lead. Each of us has a place in this community and in the work of building a more beloved world. Hosmer was gentle and sentimental Sentimental, this word that sometimes has negative connotations now, but I want to reclaim sentimentality a little bit with the help of Hosmer. It doesn't just have to be a saccharine reverence for the past. Hosmer was sentimental about the future. He was moved to poetry and song by this feeling, this faith he had that we could be better if we could just harness the best of us and put it into service for all of humanity. Hosmer died in 1929, so he did not live to see the Great Depression or the global conflicts that would challenge so much of this optimistic theology of human progress and perfection. Much of his upwards and onwards forever kind of sentiment might feel a little outdated now along with his lyrics. But he still has an important message for us. And so I wonder what he would say if we were taking a walk up Rattlesnake Canyon together today, or if he was joining us at our winter solstice sunset event. One of the other things he predicted in the introduction to his hymnal was that more and more songs about nature would find their way into our hymns, and that the name of God might be left out, but the feeling inspired by the natural world, would slowly grow, and he was right on with that prediction. If we could go on that walk together, I think he would advise us not to lose too much of our sentimentality, to not let ourselves grow cynical and bitter. Don't lose sight of that feeling, he might say, that soaring hope, the intertwining of grief and love. Let yourselves be moved, he might say. Let music live among us and bolster our spirits and give us a break from overthinking everything and allow us to feel our values, to sing our moral and ethical commitments with joy, not just as rational actions, but also as sentimental dreams of a future that is yet to be born. The spirit of God that Hosmer sang about was the intuition of that infinite spirit of love and justice that is both a refuge and a beacon that reminds us our human destiny is to live into that spirit, to follow that call forward through the ages. May it be so, blessed be, and amen. And let us listen to forward through the ages.
I love the line, wider grows the vision, realm of love and light. For it what we must labor till our faith is sight, till what we believe in is made into something we can see and experience. We labor on together, but with joy and song in our hearts. Please rise in body and spirit, and if you'd like to put your hands over your heart or hold your hands open to the world, however it is you get connected to that stream of music we call life, that life that moves through us and expresses itself in song and beauty and joy. And as you go out into this world, into this beautiful and heartbreaking world, perhaps maybe this week you'll find yourself moved to song. Try to find a moment, something that stirs in you that desire to express yourself through music and either sing yourself or put on a favorite tune. Let music be a moment of joy in the week, whatever else happens. And as you go out into the world, may the light of love shine upon you, out from within you, be gracious unto you, and bring you peace. For this is the day we are given. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's call out a blessing. We have a gift for you. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Come on up. I was supposed to do this in the middle of the service, and I just now remembered. We hope that this graces your office or your home with some beauty and joy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.